All right, we're heading down the stretch of the high school basketball season. Uh, teams have finally made the turn, and we're here to talk about it. Richard Walker, star sports editor as well as uh, sports editor here at Gazette. I'm Joe Hughes. I write for both. Uh, let's just go ahead and dig right into it. Um, Kings Mountain, of course, is uh, yes. leading leading both the boys and girls leagues, but especially for the boys, this is a big week because they take on North Gaston and then travel to us. Yeah. In uh, the last two seasons, the only Kings Mountain loss to Big South opposition came against North Gaston. At North Gaston a year ago, but yeah. this was the the, the the hurdle that they did not clear a year ago in their 13 and one regular season. Of course, they went three and zero in the conference tournament. So I'm sure Kings Mountain will be motivated. North Gaston will also be motivated yeah. because as you look at the standings entering the day. At three and five in the league, they are teetering on whether or not they would make the playoffs. So this would be the kind of game that would get them in that right frame of mind and position to, to perhaps go to the playoffs yet again. Yeah, and uh, they really they lost a heartbreaker on Friday, a game that they probably think that they should have had. They sure. were up 16 points against Huss. Huss had an 18-2 run that kind of wrapped from the second quarter to the third quarter and then lost on a buzzer beater. So you kind of think about that game right there, that could have swung things for both yeah. of them. So I'm guessing that Tuesday night's game really means a lot in that regard. Absolutely. Uh, but then Friday night, Hunter Huss, they take on Hunter Huss, Hunter Huss team that really took them to the wire mm -hmm. at Kings Mountain earlier in the season. And Huss has lost several games in a row to Kings Mountain. I believe it were up to now four in a row. Mm -hmm. And I think all of them have been games that Huss felt they could have won. I know last year in the conference tournament championship game, I went to that one at Kings Mountain. Kings Mountain won, but it was not a blowout by any means. And, and Huss, with a couple of plays, had the chance to win that game. So they're very evenly matched teams. You couple the fact that Zeke Littlejohn went to York Chester Middle School, grew up yeah. in Gastonia, and then went to Kings Mountain, adds a little intrigue to the matchup. Um, it, it's certainly a battle, and, you know, schools that – districts bump into one another and, and the kids probably run into each other quite frequently when they go to the rec centers and play pickup ball or, yeah. or even teammates on AAU basketball teams. Yeah, it should be fun because you have two teams that are they have key pieces that are playing well right now. Zeke Littlejohn, of course, Eli Paysauer is really yeah. playing well. and He's really added himself as a key second piece to mm -hmm. Littlejohn. Whereas for us, Daniel Mackins is really playing mm -hmm. well. He's, he has... Uh, several games in a row with double mm -hmm. figures and if they're gonna if they're gonna play well in this game it's really gonna be on him yeah it's it's you know it, it's certainly what we expected when the year started yeah. and and we're getting it and, and kings mountain you know a lot of people were wondering the loss of adrian delf and some other key pieces from last year how could they bounce back and they've done that and then some and obviously they've had to They've navigated a challenging schedule. You saw them early in the year. I mean, they're probably not even close to the same team yeah. that lost to Cox Mill the way they did. Now, you know, they have shown some improvement. I mean, they had a, a lull where they lost some players going to football visits, and, and they struggled yeah. a little bit with some games, lost to East Lincoln again. You know, Kings Mountain still has a lot to play for, but, you know, they're sitting in a good position in the Big South. Yeah. Perhaps their seating from a statewide perspective won't be all that high because they've lost some of conference games. But as far as the Big South goes, this is a week where they could kind of, you know, put their stamp on the league. And they've also got that game looming coming up against Ashbrook, I believe, would be next Tuesday, I believe is, that, is correct. Yeah. I remember, yeah they, so, they, so they go to Huss and Ashbrook back-to-back -back playing dates. A big, obviously a big yeah, stretch here for the Mountaineers. It's a big stretch for all three of those teams because yeah. they're, they're the top three yeah. teams in that league. And Ashbrook is really coming along, and they're really showing that mm -hmm. they could be dangerous. Yeah. They have three guys in Britt. Dotson and uh, their big guy Watkins. Watkins. That is really. They're showing that they have their pieces are starting to come together. They really took. I think we we saw a little bit of them growing up on Friday at first, down mm -hmm. nine early and then win by nine. Big road. And that's road probably road. a game that you know a year or two ago maybe they would lose. I mean yeah. it shows some, because you know let's face it, no matter how they talk about it, every game you play them one game at a time. Players and teams are going to have off nights. Yeah. The key to figuring out how you're going to be down the road in the state playoffs is how do you address that off night? Can you overcome that challenge? Can you figure out a way to win that game, not playing your best, and then yeah. get back to practice the following day or two or three days later and work on your mistakes and, and, and get improvement moving forward? And, and that, that, you know, 
there's, like I said, you could look at that as does it show that Ashbrook's vulnerable? Or does it show a, a big learning tool for Richard Carson's team? And I'm sure he's trying to look at that as a learning tool moving forward because, as you say, Ashbrook's the only team with a really legitimate chance of catching Kings Mount. Because, you know, if you're sitting back at five and three for Husses, it's hard to imagine Kings Mount yeah. losing three games. Granted, you got a shot at them. But, you know, a loss here, and you're five games behind Technica because you'd be four games behind, but you, you you couldn't time to make it up. So it, it would close Huss out if Huss can't beat them on Friday night. And speaking of closing out, we're, uh, we've talked a lot about the big three teams in the big South 3A girls race. Mm -hmm. Kings, Kings Mountain got a big win that wasn't even involved in them last week. Exactly. They they actually were at the North Gaston game just trying to get a, a few pointers of what they might see on Tuesday night against North Gaston. And then... The coach scream, screams at me from from the the rafters saying, "Joe, Ashbrook lost." Yeah. It can it caught me by surprise and probably caught plenty of other people by surprise as well. Including probably most notably Ashbrook. Exactly. exactly. I mean, good win for Thurman Jeter and Burns. I mean, a big win for their program. Certainly, and, but it creates a, a huge game for Ashbrook, not Ashbrook, but Kings Mountain and North Gaston on mm -hmm. Tuesday night, where a season sweep basically give Kings Mountain the lead mm -hmm. for all intents and purposes. Yeah, it will be hard for people to make up that. Exactly. Because, I mean, it's hard for me to imagine other teams being able to beat Kings Mountain. And if Kings Mountain is clear of North Gaston and all they've got ahead of them is Ashbrook, is Ashbrook and they would have a two-game lead, that would make it tough. Certainly. And uh, that, conversely, a North Gaston win puts everything else back in play. Right back up, yeah. It puts sure everything does. back in play because Kings Mountain still has to go to North uh, to Ashbrook, yep. and that's not going to be an easy game. No. Regardless of Ashbrook's inconsistencies here and there, their missteps. Yeah. Well, the problem with what's happened in Ashbrook is the having very few players finally caught up with them. Yeah. It, it, same, basically, same thing that happened to them at Kings Mountain. Mm -hmm. You have players get in foul trouble. You have yeah, other you can't catch the same way. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So. Let's talk about East Lincoln and their pursuit, because they they've just been impressive and they just continue to find new yeah. ways to win. They're they're looking at trying to be the top two A seed in the West, and you know obviously East Lincoln. I mean East Rutherford's going to be a team that's going to be in that discussion. Yeah. I kind of feel like East Rutherford's conference is a little more top heavy than is East Lincoln's conference, Certainly. but but thus far East Rutherford has navigated that. And they've continued to do so. I mean, you know, close wins, but their wins nonetheless. And yeah. the thing about East Lincoln that's so impressive is nobody in their league has really given them much challenge at all. And With moving the, forward, will that help or hurt you moving forward? Yeah. And East Gaston might be the most hard luck team around. I think mean, they've got. Yes. They're, they're, I'm planning on covering them tonight at South Point. And, you know, obviously you have to pay for South Point. They're at home. They've been winning. But East Gaston has had four of their losses of 10 or less points in their conference. So, you know, they, obviously they're due for a reward or get some fortune shine favorably on them. They've been right there knocking on the door against the better teams in the conference. Right. Even their non-conference schedule. Yeah. They, even against... Uh, and they got a big non-conference game, makeup game against Ashbrook on Thursday night. So, East Gaston has played a real challenging schedule and if they can get through this and figure out a way to win or close out some of these close games, who knows what could happen going down the stretch. Right. Well, yeah, but that... that you brought up a good point about seeding in East mm -hmm. Rutherford and East Lincoln. That's going to be something to watch here going down the stretch. Southern Piedmont 1A is also going to be something. Uh, Lincoln Charter can really create some distance on yeah. Tuesday night with a win over Piedmont Community Charter. And then Piedmont Community Charter goes to Cherville on, on Friday. Yeah, Piedmont Community Charter could go from really, you know, in a really good position to they're looking squarely at a three-game potential losing streak here if they don't play better. And again, the Bessemer game was a game they could have and maybe should have won, yeah. but give Bessemer City credit for battling, battling, scrapping, clawing, getting the game in overtime, and then they dominated in overtime. And Piedmont Charter seemed to run out of gas a little bit in that game. Yeah, uh, I saw Bessemer City play Cherville earlier this year. It's, it's not your pretty type of game of basketball. There isn't anything pretty about it. It's not pleasing on the eyes. But for some reason, it's effective. Well, you got you got a couple of ball handlers who are willing to pass it in Justice Davis and Jaquela Harden Pap, and you know when they get a little something out of Nelson and Collins and those other guys, Bessemer can have something. I mean, Jalen Perlou is as good a player as there is in that league. Yeah. 
but he needs some help. And, and, and Friday night, I think Vincent Davis was out of action. I'm not sure if he comes back tonight, but we'll see, you know, moving forward. I mean, it, it's really fascinating. I think, I think we all felt like that Lincoln Charter was a notch ahead of everybody That still may prove to be true. Yeah. The fact that they go to Cherubin and only win by 10 indicates that the, the second half of the conference is getting closer. I mean, obviously, Lake of Charter is probably going to win this conference, but, you know, last year's player of the year was Kobe Christian, and, and Highland Tech has had no luck so far. They're the yeah. East Gaston version of, of Southern Piedmont, and he's a heck of a player, and they're just not finding ways to win these close games, and I think it's a real battle because, you know, Thomas Jefferson looks to be improved. I mean, yeah. everybody in that league has a win that you can point to and say, you know, they – they're pretty good because Highland Tech started seven and zero before they got into conference play, and they they're still trying to look for their first conference win. Yeah, and of course we like talking about Gaston Day boys and girls. Yeah. Uh, both of them sitting there with one loss apiece. Both of them basically lost on the same night to Con Concord First Assembly. They certainly that got their attention. It would appear. Yeah, the girls really. I think they only gave up twenty one points last week total in two games. Yeah, and Demi out of Lakeham. Yep. He continues to impress with double double after double double. Yeah, and he's it's going to be fascinating where he lands. Obviously, he's getting a lot of interest from Ivy League schools. I would think, just personally, that would be hard to turn down. Certainly. But you know, he's gone from being, by many estimation, a Division Two likely player to now he's into the Division One mid major range, and if it not beyond and. He gets a lot of credit, and, and, and that program gets yeah. a lot of credit for kind of helping produce that. But, I mean, you can't teach the size and the wingspan and the skill set that he's gotten. But he's done a lot of work because I think he's in better physical shape than he was a year ago when he had to basically be a caddy for that super team that had Nate Hinton and Quan McClooney and MJ Armstrong. And now he's kind of learning to be the, the, the hub of the offense and, and kind of their main player on, on offense and defense. Yeah, he is the man mm -hmm. for that team. And without him – we might, they might have lost three or four games that yeah. they possibly were supposed to well, lose. Well, and the thing that they've got that I've noticed, and it's interesting because, like I said, when you've got a Hinton, a McClooney, and an Armstrong, you learn to be unselfish. Ja'Kai Belton and John Crump, who have been around for a long time, same as Adela Coon, they've all learned kind of to share the basketball and share the attention, and I think they recognize that Adela Coon is, is the player that can push them a high level and they've come through because I think Belton had a winning shot last week in one of the win yeah. victories they had so they're getting a lot of con contributions from a lot of guys and you know I, I think it was interesting when the year started you're thinking well they, they had their best chance a year ago getting the state finals maybe they don't make it back that far but they certainly appear to be post Concord First Assembly peaking at the right time because yeah. their playoffs started a couple of weeks before the North Carolina High School Athletic Association right. Public School playoffs began. Right. Because they they only have two more games before yep. their conference tournament starts, and then right after that, jump right into the independent school playoffs. Yeah. But uh, anything else? Yeah, we middle schools have started. We you know we got that going. Keep voting for our players of the week, and obviously we're going to keep doing this throughout the season. Hopefully, this bad weather that's in the Midwest does not strike here. I know it's affected the wrestling playoffs and moved them back because the mountains in North Carolina have had some weather issues. Hopefully, we will avoid them, but. We'll be back talking to you again next week.